This is Every Creature Commission Television, the courtroom of God. Welcome to our program that puts Judges Rinda and Judy completely in the dark. For this is the courtroom of God, the courtroom where matters are decided. You know, Great Britain has a Christian heritage, a heritage so precious, so glorious, and we are rejoicing in that. But when those of Luciferian doctrine come to our nation and look to take it over, they think they can run roughshod over our Puritan constitution. They think they can silence the street preacher. The street preacher being today about the only person on the streets upholding the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, the constitutional demand. And as we go over live on ECC TV to the intercessory barristers, there they are in the name of Jesus, Margaret Transfield. Hello, Margaret. Lindsay Griffiths. Hello, Lindsay. Hello, everybody. And Marjorie Bynum. Hello, Marjorie. These are the intercessory barristers, and this is the courtroom of God. Now I'm going to be walking over now into the courtroom. The barristers are ready. God is on his judgment seat. And we as barristers for the Constitution, barristers for the prosecution, are here today in the name of Jesus. Now as I walk over and put on the studio lights, here in the courtroom of God, so you can really not only see us better in natural light, but see the glory of the Lord illuminate the darkness. This courtroom of God is here today with the barristers ready, Marjorie. Oh, praise the Lord, hallelujah. We are here to attack the new world order. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Our case for the prosecution. And if you are watching today live on ECC TV, in any of the police forces around Great Britain or around the United States who have suppressed the street preacher by arresting him or her, Please phone us on 01492 one extension 1. Lindsay will leave the courtroom, go to the phone. If you want to place your case before God for silencing the street preacher. In our hearts, this is a gross sin of blasphemy and high treason. And I have to remind you all the seriousness of this case. For should the police forces around the world in suppressing the street preacher be found guilty in this courtroom without repentance, the sentence is a lifetime in the lake of fire. Such is the significance of the court case today. The prosecution begins its case in Deuteronomy chapter 32, known as the Song of Moses. And it is on Mosaic law, Great Britain and the United States law has been based. So it is appropriate that we present our case today as the barristers of God, prosecuting police forces around the world for 
suppressing the street preacher, it is appropriate that we read the Song of Moses. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord. So our case today is that the name of the Lord is to be published, O God. Ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. So we have this intercessory breakthrough program, the courtroom of God. He is a God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. And we present this song of Moses is our case today in Great Britain and also in parts of the United States. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. We are saying this over United States and over UK, countries of the world, that we are living in a perverse and crooked generation. Mm -hmm. A generation has brought in laws to abort mm -hmm. the unborn child and now looking to suppress the street preacher. Mm -hmm. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that has brought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father and he will show thee. Thy elders and they will tell me. When the Most High divided to the nations, not one nation, to the nations, no such thing as a culmination of nations into a new world order their inheritance when he separated the sons of Adam he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel for the Lord's portion is his people Jacob is the lot of his inheritance he found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about, he instructed him, he kept him as the apple of his eye. This is our Judeo-Christian heritage in Great Britain and the United States. And what we're placing before the Father today is that this has been compromise. That no more can we preach the gospel freely there is a headline in the British church newspaper dated Friday November the 10th 2017 which declares the Christians may have to trim sermons to avoid breaching extremist guidelines this crooked generation O oh father is not only looking to suppress the street preacher, but reduce the size of sermons. Oh, my. I tell you, the courtroom of God is here to pass judgment today. And should nations be found guilty, then they are placed under a curse and can never prosper. For our prosperity is the Lord and him alone. 
break a covenant with him and you destroy a land. You know the wise man Lindsay and Margaret and Marjorie built his house upon the rock. The rock yes. And when the wind and the storm that blow this house stood firm. But in a world which we are witnessing today is having all kinds of problems. The threat of nuclear war has never been greater. We declare today that in this courtroom of God, we need to make a stand and be firm. For the wrong decision of nations, that is to suppress the street preacher, to suppress the gospel, will bring death and not life. When the Most High divided to the nations to their inheritance, he separated the sons of Adam. It is unlawful to look to combine the nations into one world order and to suppress the gospel. The Lord's portion as his people, Jacob is the lot of his inheritance found him in a desert land in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about, instructed him, kept in as the apple of his eye. And as an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, birdeth them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields. He made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. Butter of kine and milk of sheep with fat of lambs and rams of the breed of Basham and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat, thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. But Jesu run wax fat, kick thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him. And we are placing before the throne room of God, Great Britain and the United States, less so the United States, because President Trump has looked to a degree to restore the Christian heritage, as indeed as Vice President Pence. But in Great Britain, no such activity. We place before the Father today a complete turning away and that the corruption in Parliament from the 1980s as discovered by Dickon, Whitehouse and Oxley. The evil of parliamentarians is to come out again and be exposed. Why? Because they have forsaken God which made them. Lightly esteemed the rock of our salvation. They have provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. And we are putting towards the Father today, Art thou jealous, O God, that a nation such as Great Britain, which is coronation host and Puritan constitution, should turn to strange gods with abominations provoked you to anger. We put to you, Father, according to the words of God, as with Israel, the day of sacrifice unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. 
And we place this before you, Father, today, that the police authorities, the universities, the colleges, the hospitals, government bodies, councils, parliaments, have forgotten God, the God that formed them. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred him, them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very froward generation. This we place before you today, Father, that we again are dealing with a froward generation. Children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy, thus saith the Lord, with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. For a fire is kindled in mine anger. You know, Marjorie, Margaret, and Lindsay, I feel this is the rhema of God today. Absolutely. That we're dealing with an angry God. And shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with their increase, set on fire the foundations of the mountains. We're seeing this around the world at this time. I will heap mischiefs upon them, I will spend mine arrows upon them, they shall be burnt with hunger, devoured with burning heat. And with bitter destruction I will also send the teeth of beasts unto them with the poison of the serpents of the dust. Let me tell you this, Great Britain, it is sure time to repent. The sword without and terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, the suckling also with the man of grey hairs. I said I would scatter them unto corners, I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Were it not that I fear the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, O oh Lord, our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. For they declared Moses, are a nation void of counsel. Neither is there any understanding in them. And this we place before the Father today. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had sold them and the Lord had shut them up. We are putting to you today that by suppressing the street preacher, you are suppressing the very life that brings survival of our nation. For their rock, verse 31, is not as our rock. Even our enemies themselves being judges. Now this is very significant. Because we discover from the word of God there is more than one rock. Their rock is not as our rock. Even our enemies themselves being judges. It's what's happened to this ministry. They have placed judges, judgments against this ministry. From a diverse and uncounseled generation. Draining us of resources. To proclaim the gospel just as they come against the street preacher on the street. Their vine is of the vine of Sodom. We now know there are two vines, two rocks, two vines. The true vine bear the fruit through the branches. 
man leaving his parents to be joined unto one wife so as to bring forth fruit. Whereas the false vine brings together those of strange flesh incapable of bearing fruit. Place to you, Father, that it is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah with grapes as of gall and bitter clusters, with vine, the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps is what we're dealing with in the courtroom of God today. Is not this laid up in store with me, declareth the Lord, and sealed up among my treasures? To me belong of vengeance. I believe the courtroom is being heard, that this is the word of the Lord today, and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. For the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. For the Lord shall judge his people, and repent himself for his servants. When he seeth that their power is gone, there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are their gods? their rock in whom they trusted, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. See now that I, even I, am he and there is no God with me. I kill and make alive, I wound and I heal, neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword, declares the Lord, and mine hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance on mine enemies and will forward them that hate me. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood. My sword shall devour flesh, and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revenge upon the enemy. Rejoice, O ye nations, the word through Moses, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants, will render vengeance to his adversaries, and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. No police forces suppressing the street preacher brings forth death to the nation is an unconstitutional stand, O God, and will bring curse upon thy force and upon the land. For this is the word of the Lord. Mm. And Moses came and spake all the words of this song in the ears of the people. He and O'Shea, the son of Nun. Moses made an end of speaking all these words to all Israel. And he said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children to observe to do all the words of this law, which is not a vain thing for you, because it is your life. Through his thing ye shall prolong your days in the land, whither ye go over Jordan to possess it. The Lord spake unto Moses that self same day, saying, Get thee up unto this mountain, Abram, unto Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, that is over against Jericho. Behold the land of Canaan which I give unto the children of Israel for a possession. Die in the mount whither thou goest up, be gathered unto thy people as Aram uh, on thy brother died in Mount Hor and was gathered unto his people. Because ye trespassed against me among the children of Israel at the waters of Mesbath Kadesh, in the wilderness of Zin, because ye sanctified me in the midst of the children of Israel. Yet thou shalt see the land before thee, but thou shalt not go thither unto the land 
which I give the children of Israel. So what we discover from the Song of Moses, there are two rocks. There are two vines. The true vine bearing fruit and the vine of Sodom bearing not fruit but death. We put before the Father, the Lord of Lord of glory, the Act of Supremacy 1534, which demands that the monarch, as head of state, bring the conditions for the increase in virtue of Christ's religion. Means an increase in the anointing, mean the word has to be spoken. The monarch being obligated by law to repress, extirpate, or errors, heresies, and other enormities and abuses. She is to conserve the peace, unity, tranquility of the realm and repress the infiltration of foreign laws and systems into our nation. Addressing the monarch in 1953, Archbishop Fisher asked Queen Elizabeth II, will you to the utmost of your power maintain the laws of God in the true profession of the gospel? Will you to the utmost of your power maintain in the United Kingdom the Protestant reform religion established by law? Will you maintain and preserve inviolably the settlement of the Church of England, the doctrine, worship, discipline and government thereof, as by law established in England. Will you preserve unto the bishops and clergy of England and to the churches that committed to their charge all such rights and privileges as by law do shall appertain to them or any of them. The monarch answered all this I promised to do. She promised to maintain the laws, laws of God. True profession of the gospel we put to you, Father. The street preacher is doing just that proclaiming the word of the Lord, proclaiming the gospel, and your police force is stopping him or her. The Lord speaking, this is a serious crime. We place to you, Father, your word today, which declares that the word of God is to be proclaimed publicly. The word proclaim meaning to speak out with a loud voice. We read from the word of God the familiar spirits peep and mutter, but the Lord spake with a great voice. That the Lord's voice crieth. That the lion roars. God speak through men who prophesy. To suppress the word of the Lord on the streets, we say, is supreme heresy, leading souls to the lake of fire. Mm. We declare that preaching is a public exercise. Jeremiah 11.6 declares, proclaim all these words in the cities and in the streets. Stand in the gate and in all the gates of Jerusalem that we are to preach upon the housetops. Acts 10.42 is the command to every Christian to preach unto the people. And so in this court case today, in the word of the Lord, we are declaring the victory of Jesus. However, this is not the victory of those suppressing the street preacher. You have broken the word of the Lord and you are here today for judgment. One such preacher was in Perth, Scotland. And shopkeepers complained because of the loudness of his word. And the police came, I understand, looking to put one of these ridiculous, uh, breaking the peace. No, no. 
Proclaiming the word of God. Mm. What was that, Lindsay? Breach of, the peace. Breach of the peace. Whatever they call it. Mm. It's just a nonsense. You, you can't do that because Jesus is our peace. Not being silent as regards to the words concerned. I've heard, and the Lord's saying he's heard enough. And, and uh, barristers, have you anything to say? Marjorie, Margaret, you. Lindsay, you carry on. Have, You've got no I microphone. I have a, a, a scripture which the Lord has been giving me, which is to encourage us. I like a prayer uh, over the street preachers. It's Isaiah 41, if I could have it, please. Yes, please, yes. Because this is what the Lord is saying about the street preachers, not what the police yes. and the establishment yes. and the New World Order and all these complaining, moaning voices yes. are saying. Yes, yes, yes. This is the word. Oh, it's Isaiah 41. Jesus. Praise the Lord. And it's a, it's a well-known word. It's a very, very much an mm. encouragement for them. Yeah. And this is what he's saying and what he mm. is turning them into. Yes. The straight preachers. Just bear with me one moment, dear viewers, as I find Isaiah 41. And here it is. Okay. Finding it now. Starting at verse 10. To the straight preachers from the Lord. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. For I am thy God, I will strengthen ye, yea, I will help ye, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them, even them that contended with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing, and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou worm, Jacob. And ye men of Israel, I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Hallelujah. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains, and beat them small, and shalt make the hills as chaff. Thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away. And the whirlwind shall scatter them. That's significant, viewers and listeners. Because this nation and those who come against these street pre preachers, they've sown the wind and they shall reap the whirlwind. Isn't that right? Thou shalt fan them, as it says, and the whirlwind shall scatter them. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord and shalt glory in the Holy One of Israel. Amen. Praise the Lord. And is the, any of the other barristers here have a word into this situation? Barrister Margaret, Barrister Marjorie. Strangely quiet today. You ready, Mar Mar Margaret? I praise you, Lord, Almighty God. Deception is rife in your world. That deception, Lord. Lies crushing your gospel news, crushing, crushing it out, Lord, as street preachers are being gagged, Lord. Lord, your word, your word never fails. Your word is there, and unless they listen, they will reap what they have sown. They will reap. I praise you, almighty God. Jesus, the one and only begotten Son of Almighty God, who died to save us all from sin. I lift it to you, oh Father God. I lift this to you, Lord. This has to stop. It's lies, 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 deception. It has to stop. In Jesus' name. 
and they built upon it. Thank you. Thank you, Barrister Margaret. Is Barrister Marjorie a word to say at all? Yes, she's taking the microphone. Jesus came to set the captives free. And if Jesus sets us free, we are free indeed. And no one is to be bound evermore. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, we praise you, Lord. The court will rise. I'm standing now to go over to the um, control room where I will see you and bring a summary of what has gone on in the courtroom of God today. We praise you and give you all the glory, O Lord. We know that this is a special time. The word has been given. The barristers have put their case. And the Lord would have me give a summary for all those in the courtroom today to bring an understanding of what has been going on here. We praise you and give you glory, O Lord. This is the courtroom of God. We've heard the word of the Lord in relation to the plight of the street preacher. And Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, having heard the word through the barristers who quoted today the song of Moses. And to conclude from the word of God, the behavior of street preachers throughout the word, they were men and women, as they are today, of zero deception. They taught the whole council, even controversial doctrines, without softening, adjusting, or modifying. They confessed their faults and true beliefs. They recognized and challenged their enemies. They did not calculate the consequence of their obedience. They were men and women of zero advantage. They avoided human wisdom and eloquence. They lacked and didn't miss, in some cases, education, whilst in other cases, they were educated men and women. But that was not their primary focus, but revelation of God. They often lacked money, buildings, modern equipment and methods. They did not use entertainment like games, gifts, politics or fads. Nor did they use celebrities, popular artists or heroes. They were decidedly unbusinesslike, even disorganized and materially unpreferred. But they were men and women of zero compromise. They did not avoid controversy, conflict, persecution, nor even their own death. They did not long for unity, popularity, nor mutual respect. They accepted no truce with a lie. They made no friendship with false brethren. They countenanced no yoke with unbelievers. They demanded sincere and public decisions of faith. They required true repentance and the fruits thereof. They expected real humility, commitment and total surrender. They made nothing easy. This is our case to you, Father, today of the street preacher. They did not count on success, crowds, a good income, or the respect of their peers. They attach no importance to consequences, trials, or persecutions. They were unmoved by failures, betrayals, and disappointments. They were neither pessimists nor dreamers. They demanded nothing from God, not health, wealth, miracles, not even freedom. John the Baptist used strong language, required fruits, ran off hypocrites, belittled traditions, religions, and homeland, exalted Christ and warned of judgment. And in line with John the Baptist today, we warn Great Britain and Ireland, United States and nations around the world 
to beware of judgment. For to suppress the word of God not only is breaking the coronation oath of the nation, you are breaking the heart of God. For he is obligated to bring the judgment. Jesus spoke frankly, specifically, accused directly of vain glory, hypocrisy, and a sin, taught doctrine, warning of judgment. He quoted scripture. He angered his listeners, accused of unbelief, and warned of damnation. Such is our warning today to the nation of Great Britain, Ireland, and the United States and nations around the world. You have forsaken God, and the judgment is here. Without repentance, you are sentenced to the lake of fire. But come ye, all ye who are heavy laden, I will give you rest. For it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You know our nation has brought about many street preachers. Here are just some of them from the past. See Leonard Ravenhill and Maynard James, proclaimers of the gospel. And indeed today, the Bible College of Wales has been restored, offering fee-free courses so as to perfect the saints for the work of the ministry. Around the world we intercede. They that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. Thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. This has been the courtroom of God. Coming to you from the Brindley Studios in Rosan Sea. The judgment has been said to suppress the word of God. The sentence is death. But sinner, you can repent of your sin. You can escape the lake of fire through the blood of Jesus. Take no heed to the emerging church who offers comforting antidotes, saying all is well, you can carry on with your sin. For the true church gives the unpleasant truths. And this unpleasant truth is that nations are bound for the lake of fire without repentance. You can ring today representatives of police forces around the world, 01492 53451 extension 1. Repent of your sin before the Lord, and God will bring you into his kingdom, the kingdom of glory, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. This has been ECCTV.org, live streaming from Roson Sea, Carwin Bay, all over the world. We thank you for joining us today on the courtroom of God. Thank you. The judgment has been given. God bless. We love you. Bye-bye for now.